Hello, so this video is about physical activity, exercise, and maintaining a healthy weight. In this educational and organizational change session, we will learn about having a healthy weight and the body mass index to help individuals in an educational way. Participants will have an opportunity to calculate their own BMI. We will discuss how physically active is good for us and ways we can keep active. To help the Clubhouse organization, we review how Genesis Club started their health promotion activities and expanded into its this into tobacco cessations. This may help other clubhouses with their organizational change efforts. Physical activity helps you mentally and physically. Regular exercise can help prevent heart disease, lower your blood pressure, prevent bone loss, and promote weight loss. Exercise also helps people manage stress and feel better. So discussion questions. Do you know how much you weigh? I do, yes. Uh, do you know if you're a healthy weight? I know I'm not, and I'm working on becoming a healthy weight. So, a person's weight is the result of many factors, including environment, family history, genetics, metabolism, which is the way your body changes food and oxygen into energy, behavior, and habits. Being overweight or obese puts you at risk for many disease and conditions, including heart disease, gallbladder disease, breathing problems, and some cancers. Those with a mental illness have a 25 year earlier mortality rate than the general population. Data collected from the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey reported that 29% of men and 60% of women with mental illness are obese, compared to 17% and 28% in the general population. Body Mass Index an easy way to determine a healthy weight is to use the body mass index. BMI measures the proportions of your weight to your height. For instance, someone who is overweight will have a higher BMI because they weigh more than what they should for their height. The normal range for BMI is 18.5 to 24.9. If your BMI is above 25, you have a greater risk of developing several serious disease, such as heart disease, type 2 diabetes, some cancers, stroke, and early death. The higher the BMI, the more, the more risk you have for developing a serious disease. So there are four adult BMI categories. Underweight, which is BMI is below 18.5. Normal, which is your BMI is 18.5 to 24.9. Overweight is 25 20, to 29.9. And obese is 30 or higher. So do you know what your BMI, your body mass index is? Um, I know what category I'm in. Current, according to this standards, I'm technically in the obese category. I admit I don't like using the body mass index. So exercise, calculate your BMI. You can figure out your BMI if you know your height and weight using the BMI table. First, find your height in inches in the left-hand column. Then move across to your body weight in pounds. The number at the top of the column is your BMI. So I have the chart on the next slide. I will wait and let people... Alright, so this is actually one of the things I found, which is why I don't like the BMI, and so why BMI is inaccurate and misleading. BMI, which is based on height and weight of a person, is an inaccurate measure of body fat content. It does not take into account muscle mass, bone density, overall body composition, and racial and sex differences. And this is according to researchers from the 
Perelman Perel School of Medicine, uh, University of Pennsylvania. Every few months, the same content is made by experts saying that the BMI is flawed. The news hits the headlines, everybody agrees, and then all goes quiet for a while. Professor Tree Fethin believes that the BMI height to weight term divides the weight by too much in short people and too little in tall people. Uh, these results in tall people believing they are fatter than they really are and short people thinking they are thinner. BMI was devised in the 1830s by Lambert Adolf Jax Quillet, a Belgian mathematician, socialist, socialist um, statistician, and astronomer. Uh, professor, the Professor Tree Trifatin explained that during the creator's time, there was no computers, calculators, or electronic devices, which is probably why he opted for a super simple system. Tree Fetin wonders why institutions today on both sides um, of the Atlantic continues using the same flawed BMI formula. So this one is explaining how the waist to height ratio is better than BMI. Dr. Margaret Ashwell, an independent consultant and former science director of the British Nutrition Foundation, explained at the 19th Congress on Obesity in Lyon, France, in May 2012, that waist to height ratio is superior predictor of BMI, of type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. Dr. Ashwell said, keep your waist circumference to less than half of your height which can help increase life expectancy for every person in the world. Thus, a six foot tall man should have a waist circumference of 36 inches or less, while a five foot four inch woman's waist should not exceed 32 inches. The waist to height ratio should be considered as a screening tool. Ashwell explained that BMI does not take into account the distribution of fat around the body, Abdominal fat um, affects organs like kidney, liver, and heart uh, more seriously than fat around the bottom, hips, or hips. Waist circumference gives an indication of abdominal fat levels. Dr. Ashwell and colleagues believe that the thought, keep your waist circumference to less than half your weight height, is easier one to hold onto than that of the BMI. So this is a video. As if you needed more reasons to watch your weight, a new report says the key to a longer life is all in the waistline. In a study, researchers from City University London looked at two decades worth of data from about 300,000 adults. They say your waistline measurement should be no more than half your height in order to live a prolonged life. According to their developed formula, this would mean the waist of a male adult who's 5 foot 10 should be no larger than 35 inches. Similarly, a 5 foot 4 woman's waist should measure 32 inches. An increase of as many as 7 inches can trim more than one and a half years off his or her life. Research linking waist size and mortality has been done before and all have come up with the same conclusion, that excess fat around the waist can contribute to premature death. But all the studies have also determined body mass index, which is used in most current health predictions and is not necessarily an accurate representation of health by itself. BMI is a tool used to measure the health of an individual by looking at someone's weight relative to their height, but it's often seen criticisms in the health community. The Daily Mail quotes the study's lead author who says the new formula could better determine how fat around the waistline affects high cholesterol, diabetes, and heart disease. People are living in false hope if they rely on their BMI figure. We've got to measure the right thing. Other experts say BMI doesn't distinguish between fat and muscle. Because muscle weighs more than fat, the index might determine a muscular person to be obese. It also fails to account for the fact taller people might take up more space without necessarily being overweight or obese. The study was published in the Public Library of Science. For Newsy, I'm Sebastian Martinez. As if you needed more...
Okay, so what can you do to maintain a healthy lifestyle and keep physically active? You can get off a bus, get off the bus a stop or two early and walk to your club or home. Use the clubhouse stairs instead of taking the elevator. Volunteer for some physical work in your clubhouse work unit or household chores. Start walking, it's free. Take a walk after lunch or dinner. Join the exercise or walking group or softball team at your clubhouse. Attend a, and participate in clubhouse's social functions. If your clubhouse does not currently offer opportunities for physical activity, see if there are any other community resources. So this is a list of um, common activities and calories burned in 30 minutes by weight. I'm not going to go over all of them, but it is amazing to me how much you can calories you can lose just by sleeping or reading, sitting in meetings, um, washing your car, mopping household. So this is all about home and daily life and things you can do that burn calories. Yeah, you can pause here if you need more time, but I'm going to slide on. So this one is outdoor work, and once again, this is for 30 minutes. So 30 minutes of raking, if you weigh 120, is probably about 90 calories. Right. And this one is, uh, once again, still only 30 minutes of sports, leisure, and outdoor activities, and how much calories you can burn. All right. So just question questions. What are one or two new activities that you think you might enjoy and are willing to try next week to stay physically active? So currently to stay physically active, I've been doing couch to 5K on some of the different machines, going for hikes. I have a smart hula hoop. Um, I think I'm just going to, in the next week, focus on doing those more consistently. So why is being physically active beneficial for you? Well, all the health reasons they describe in this thing. Um, and keeping up with my daughter, being able to breathe better. How can Clubhouse members and staff help you stay physically active? So, as a member of the Clubhouse, um... I can help use the Clubhouse Wellness Center. I can become a part of the wellness group. I can join the health and wellness initiative meetings, which is what this is from. Yeah. 
So this one is specifically about organizational changes um, for the clubhouse. So at Genesis Club, it was determined that many clubhouse members were overweight and struggling with poor physical health. Some members, although interested in employment, had a low threshold of physical stamina and were in, unable to work on many of the employment positions even for a few hours. Karen Kennedy, a Genesis Clubhouse member and, and board of directors, talks about her dual diagnosis of obesity and mental health illness. Karen states, my obesity was more disabling than my mental illness. Karen participates in the Genesis Club exercise and nutrition program and has lost 75 pounds since then. Genesis Club and the UMass Medical School in Wor Worcester, Mass, conducted a study of structured exercise program in 2002. They reported these major findings, statistically significant increase in aerobic capacity and in perceived mental health, along with reported improvements in vitality, physical and social role functioning, and an attendance rate of 71% of all participants. However, the most important finding was the realization that the clubhouse community of members and staff could design and sustain a health and wellness program with outstanding results. Previously, the wellness program at Genesis Club consisted of walking groups, softball games, hiking trips, and bowling. These all happened on an on-again, off-again basis. The good intentions for exercise were not enough. It became clear that the clubhouse needed some additional resources and bottom line responsibilities to be able to contribute to the success of the first program. In 2004, Clubhouse teamed up with a local college that donated 20 passes to their health and fitness center for Clubhouse members. Within the international Clubhouse community, many Clubhouses were developing healthy activities and opportunities for exercise. This is evident in the recent wording added to the Clubhouse standard number 27. which is Clubhouse Standard Number 27. Community support services are provided by members and staff of the Clubhouse. Community support activities are centered in the work and unit structure of the Clubhouse. They include helping the entitlements with entitlements, housing and advocacy, promoting healthy lifestyles, as well as assisting in assessing quality medical, psychological, pharmacological and substance abuse services in the community. So discussion questions, does your clubhouse have an exercise program? Um, I wouldn't say we have a formal program, but we do have a wellness where we do activities daily. What would you like to see in a health promotion program at your clubhouse? Um, honestly, not sure about that one. And are there any places in the community that your clubhouse could connect with to provide members and staff opportunities for exercise? I think we already have a good relationship with the Y, um, and I think that's our best bet. So thank you for listening. Um, next would be a couple short stories. Uh, one from personal narrative of just a gentleman named John, and one my own. So. So this is the personal narrative of John's story. So it says, my name is John and I would like to take a moment to give a little insight as to why I participated in this year's Falmouth Road Race. Well, first off, I have to admit, exercise was never the top of my to-do list. So it is safe to say the past few years were more of a sedent sedentary lifestyle. It is proven with all the added benefits from medications, um, there are not they are not without their side effects. The leading downside to medication is weight gain and being lethargic, and in some cases, diabetes. So there is only one cure, as which we all know is exercise. I joined the Genesis Wellness Team in an attempt to tone up, trim down, and most importantly, get on the right track. And I did that. This left me feeling grateful and proud that I could be a part of someone, something so helpful. That's why when I heard there was a big benefit race with money going to the clubhouse, without hesitation, I automatically agreed to do it. Recently, I have joined the Genesis Health, Healthy Living Meetings and reduced 
to reduce my use of cigarettes. Over the past six months, I have made a quit attempt and was smoke-free for four months. Unfortunately, I am smoking again. However, I am making progress to reduce or quit smoking. Nicotine is not my only addiction. Now, I have a new one, and that is healthy living of exercise and a smoke-free way of life. Truthfully, I am forever grateful for my for the members and staff partnership that guides me to think that the nicotine addiction will not rob me of a long and productive life. For all of those attempting to quit, I just have to say that with the support of Clubhouse, you can work on quitting. So this one says my personal story. I know I don't have anything here, but I was just going to talk for a moment. So. I've struggled with obesity and my mental health my entire life. Um, I became depressed, which led me to comfort eating. Um, in a very sedentary lifestyle, I didn't have any friends. It wasn't until 2015 when I joined Unlimited Solutions Clubhouse that I really wanted to start working on what I could do because I wanted to be able to help people and I wanted to be able to work. But because of my obesity causing problems with my physical health, it made it very difficult to work. Um, it's been an ongoing process. Sometimes I lose the motivation and end up back where I was. So it's a very uphill battle. But even now, I've lost a total of 50 pounds. And I feel better than I ever have. Um, and I want to keep being healthy so I can live a long life and have a better quality of life. And I don't think I would have been able to do it without the support of the clubhouse. And I admit having projects like this to work on kind of helps me stay focused and helps me with a little bit but I think being at the clubhouse has helped with both problems obesity and my mental health and the two kind of collide together at times but overall a clubhouse has helped me with both problems and I feel like I live a much better quality of life now than I ever have so anyway, thank you for listening and that's it for this video.